Hello, all aspiring and actual roboticists to our cube. Today we want to investigate what it takes to make your cuddly toy walk by using a special robot skin which is inspired by the human muscle tendon system. All our body movements such as walking and running are possible due to the presence of muscles inside of our body. The biological process behind how muscles contract and manage to move both big and delicate parts of our body precisely is a phenomenon in nature. However, the mechanical principles by which they operate are actually very simple. Skeletal muscles are attached to bones by tendons. Each muscle in our body is made up of bundles of muscle fibers which contain myofibrils. Those contain the contractile units called sarcomeres. These contract or relax adjacent to one another when they receive certain information from the nervous system. Today we look at one possible way to recreate this type of mechanism by using a special robotic skin that can be wrapped around soft deformable objects. Controlling the skin with the actuators can, for example, allow the object to crawl along a surface. In this way, the skin acts as a muscle and the object it is put on acts as a skeleton, giving structure to how the robot moves. The skin consists of actuators and sensors, which are built into a flat, flexible tissue. The actuators, pneumatic ones or memory alloy, can bounce back into shape. And the sensors, such as onboard light sensors and capacitive sensors, allow the perception of the environment and enable state feedback as well as closed-loop control. Yale's soft robotics lab, the Fabulatory, developed the Omni Skin, which are patches of robotic skin that can be applied on a variety of different objects. The innovation of the Omni Skin is that it can be used for many purposes. For instance, the skin can be wrapped around an object to perform a locomotion task, and afterwards it can be used on a different one to perform another task such as grasping and moving an object. Now let's get creative! What else to do with such an amazing skin? Let's turn your stuffed toy into a moving robot to fetch the remote control for you. Closed loop control of the patches of skin is achieved by pairing each actuator with an offboard controller and each capacitive sensor with an onboard signal conditioning circuit. The sensors and actuators are co-located in pairs and used to provide direct state feedback. These patches of skin are very flexible in every sense of the word. They can be placed in several configurations to achieve different movements. For instance, the scientists attach the skin to a soft tube and camera, creating a worm-like robot that could compress itself and crawl into small spaces for rescue missions or the like. Placing the actuators along the length of a cylinder bends it, while placing them orthogonally induces compression. The soft bodies can also be switched out to change the dimensions or mechanical response, which can also be used to achieve different motions. Even multiple skins can be used together to produce more complicated maneuvers. The research team placed three different skins on a single spine to have the skins manipulate a single object. Then had the skins locomote in different ways before finally using them to coordinate as three different fingers of a grasping tool. They also attached the skin to various other objects, including an icosahedron to roll it, which served as the first prototype for a robot that performs repairs on a spaceship or explores the lunar surface. The dynamic compression provided by the robotic skin could also be used for G-suits to provide posture feedback and protect astronauts when they rapidly accelerate or decelerate. Three. Two, one, zero. Lift off. These patches of skin performed comparably to purpose built robots. And because the sensors relied only on the deformation of the surface of the soft body instead of the dimensions or the material, the control algorithm can be reused no matter how the skin was attached. Another remarkable research approach applies the use of robotic skin to a very specific problem emulating the human hand. 
The researchers involved in these papers proved that not only it was possible to create a soft robotic hand using this technique, but that it also could be for less than $100. To do this, the team used off-the-shelf components and fabrication techniques that could be found on internet video tutorials. To fabricate the hand, the initial hand model and pose was created iteratively in simulation. Afterwards, a mold was produced and filled with foam. A custom glove was then knitted for the foam hand, followed by a lamination process using upholstery adhesive so it is able to stay in place when attached to the foam hand. Finally, the glove was attached to an acrylic base, with tendons routed through tubes around the base. The hand was able to perform a variety of tasks that required manual dexterity, such as rolling a ball between fingers or manipulating small tools like a bottle of glue, a box cutter and a screwdriver. The hand could also pull a tennis ball with an approximate force of 5.8 newtons. A stiffer foam and stronger glove adhesive would likely have allowed for a stronger grasp. The variety and complexity of poses the hand can make depend on the underlying foam hand and the structure of the tendons. The resting state of the foam hand plays a major role. For example, a flat resting hand is bad for grasping, as the fingers can't effectively oppose the palm. But it allows for increased dexterity, since it doesn't need tendons on the back of the hand to release the grasp, meaning that more tendons can be added to the front of the hand and therefore more control over the shape of the grasp. Modifying the kinematics of the hand is very quick and easy. It took about an hour to reroute the tendons. There were two forms of control for the hand. In one, the hand made a gesture and then a user wearing a cyber glove made a matching gesture. From there, a regression model was trained that took the joint angles from the cyber glove as input and predicted the corresponding tendon activation. This technique could also be used to match human hand gestures to non-human hands. The second control technique was to develop a simulation of the hand and train based on that. The research results show that robot skin is a feasible way to control robots and certainly one worth looking into. Robotic skin can be made much more affordable than conventional robots and are far more flexible and durable in their design. Furthermore, it allows complicated motions to be built from simple parts and can be used to robotize any soft object. Since these are designed to have as many flexible use cases as possible, they can be used in a huge swath of situations. From soft medical devices, wearables that help people maintain a good posture, or even a lightweight Mars rover, the research team intentionally built a device that could have almost unlimited uses. Of course, robotic skin isn't the only technique for building non-traditional robots. We here at Roboys want to build a robot that is as good as the human body. And as part of that journey, we're working on muscles which are based on real human musculature, featuring lightweight tendons that connect the muscles to the bones. At Roboy, we aim to build robots that are as good as the human body. If you want to build exoskeletons, one of the first steps is you have to be able to build good robots. And one of the important pieces is being able to control the motors in these robots. For to that end, one important thing is that the hardware and the electronics have to work together seamlessly. The EU project MyRobotics envisions the use of biological principles in the design and construction of robotic systems for the future innovation of the robotics industry. In particular, the characteristics of biological musculoskeletal systems such as high redundancy, modularity, flexibility and reconfigurability are the aspects that could provide a large impact in the next generation of robotic systems. The Robi project is an open source project with the goal to build a robot as good as the human body. We created an open platform for robot development that unites researchers, companies, students and artists from a broad spectrum of disciplines. 
Robai means full stack robotics, from mechanics to electronics to control to cognitive systems. Artificial intelligence is everywhere, and we work on all levels to make Robai truly intelligent. The Robai team aims to build better, more useful robots by adopting principles from biology and to help humans with musculoskeletal limitations through better prosthetics, better training and exoskeletons. So if you are interested and want to know more, check out our website robai.org or the GitHub account github.com slash roboy. Thanks for watching another episode of R-Cube. See you soon and stay curious.